Welcome to my video introducing the quietly excellent Ukitel C25 smartphone. Uh, this C25 from Ukitel comes in a nice orange box, protects it well in transit. Got a little bit of information about the phone on the back. This is my new uh, Ukitel phone. Um, just wanted to look at fly by of the features. Uh, so first of all, this is the case it comes with. It comes with a couple of stickers. I've stuck them in the case just to keep them uh, stuck on the phone to start. I took them off when I set the phone up. So there is the uh, charger thing. I haven't opened that yet because I've got a multi-way fast charger in my bedroom. And I've also got an A to C lead plugged into it. So I haven't used the lead yet, um, but I probably will do at some point. It comes with a case, which is um, shipped uh, separately in here. Um, and it comes with a screen protector already fitted to the screen. Uh, it's just a, yeah. okay. Turn off the lead. So on the back, you've got a, uh, a speaker here, and here you've got the array of cameras, the flash, and that's the fingerprint sensor. The fingerprint sensor on this is reasonably good. It most of the time recognises my finger. It did that time. Um, then on the side here, you've got the on-off button and the up and down volume buttons and on this side you've got a sim tray which is operated by a little sim pin which comes in here i'm not going to take the sim tray out at the moment because uh, i've already done that and i think i've so i just wanted to have a quick look at the uh, sim slot for you you can see it's got one of these sim slots which has got a tray on the back so that uh, if you pull the sims out they don't fall out it makes them nice and easy to locate they do fall out if you turn the thing upside down, of course. So I do quite like that. That's a nice feature, and I do think all phones should really have a SIM tray like this. Unfortunately, you can only have one SIM if you're using a memory card. Um, that's a bit of a drawback. Some phones have a three-slot SIM slot, but this one only has two. And then on the bottom here is where the um, charge port is and where the microphone is. Um, so really quite nice and simply laid out, and there's the notch with the... Um, phone on on the front and another speaker at the top there so it's uh, quite a nice uh, clean simply laid out phone and it comes as I say with a case to give it a bit of protection and it's got nice bumpers on the corners and everything it slips in quite nice and easily uh, I've been using it in the case but it's obviously even lighter and thinner without the case on and then you get a little instruction booklet here you get the little SIM pin here, and it's similar to the SIM pins for the ruggedized phones, and it's got a little hook on the end to enable you to hook the SIM tray out, which is, which is quite handy, because uh, the SIM tray does pop out reasonably well, because when you have older fingers, stubbier fingers like mine, and not much fingernail, it's quite handy having this little hook, so that's quite quite good for doing that for ordinary phones now. And here is the uh, warranty certificate, where you can fill in where you bought it and everything. And uh, there is the bits and pieces of... Uh, warning information here and the instructions which are in a few different languages I think yeah they are in a few different languages um, and um, reasonably easy to read not big type but reasonably easy to read there's not much that you need to know really because all these phones are basically the same so there's nothing much in the instructions to tell you um, all in all it's been quite a, a, a good phone I've been using it for quite a few days now uh, quite like it, uh, pretty reliable, pretty fast, um, not the fastest I've had, but pretty fast nonetheless, and uh, I think it's nicely presented too. So if you're looking for a phone either for yourself or one that you want to give to someone, this is quite a good low-cost, um, high-end phone as it were. It's a, it only just over £100, so uh, quite, quite good value for what it is. Yeah, new uh, phone. Um, it's... Uh... It came with obviously only a few apps installed and then everything got automatically copied across. Uh, so I've arranged them in groups as I normally do. So I've got a set of navigation apps here which includes uh, one that shows me the current state of my car if I want to know. So it's just, it's just doing a quick refresh and see how long it takes to start up. Um, it's uh, quite a good navigation app, quite like that, using it in the car. This is the quick launch bar down the bottom here, there's the phone, this is a set of other things I quite often use like uh, Messenger Lite, uh, WhatsApp, use that a bit for various worky type things, 
contacts and email and so on so those are all in the quick launch they appear on every screen regardless of what I do uh, browser works quite well on this um, it's reasonably quick to do stuff and uh, so on and easy to easy to read quite a lot of um, e-readers on my phone so there's my Bible app here which I use a bit uh, and it's quite nice and easy to read the text is very clear and so on and quick and easy to scroll through uh, change pages and so on so all, uh, all, all very good there and uh, I quite often use Amazon Kindle as well. I find uh, phones are quite good for use for Kindle on because they're nice and small and light, but they're still big enough that they hold a good amount of text. And uh, this is a book I'm reading at the moment called The uh, Mermaid of Black Conch. One of the features I like in Android 11 is when you touch the All uh, Apps button, you get the option to take a screenshot, which I've just done. So that's quite a quick and easy way to do a screenshot when you need one. Uh, which I do from time to time. Another big use for, for our phones is um, taking photographs and there's some autumn leaves in that one uh, without flash, with flash indoors uh, of a bunch of flowers that my wife has given. As you can see the indoor without flash is probably even better than the indoor with. And here's a series of photographs taken at zero exposure, plus one exposure, plus two exposure and plus three exposure to show how you can uh, compensate for, in this case, a light sky in the uh, background in order to bring foreground things up to the correct exposure. Uh, I guess plus three is slightly overexposed, plus two is about right. And here, for good measure, is a demonstration of the panorama mode. You just follow the arrow around and the photo stitches. Some photographs of Android Auto in use. Ignore the phone, look at the car screen, that's the main menu. Uh, this is the dialing menu. If I press the telephone symbol on the car to make a phone call, I can touch any of those to call them. Uh, this is the uh, menu after I've selected a mapping application, in this case Amigo. And finally, this is the start screen for a route. Quite often, though, I prefer to actually use the phone sat-nav. So here is a long to take the first exit onto Winchester Road. So here is a little montage of that in action with the uh, map and the road following each other. I did this by syncing the auto from the screen capture and the, uh, and, and the dash cam. Roundabout onto Winchester Road. In a quarter of a mile, turn right onto Cordale Road. 